basically that's the uh the idea is living forever i think it's possible i think it's like the Taoist sages oh this is the other main thing too it's just optimizing your mitochondria basically i think that's how you live forever is optimizing mitochondria i think those four things help it but the Taoist sages i mean they like supposedly live for hundreds of years and they're like yeah you just walk a lot and don't really exhaust yourself because if you just walk then you're you're healthy that was like literally what they do they just like yeah, you just like walk like i don't know, like walk and be healthy like, why are you guys today? I think there might be some people who claim to. I don't know, though. And I think, like, the last... There's some people like the 1700s, 1800s. I mean, there's just... There are a lot of Taoist sages from, like, I'd say, like, 1500 to 17 or 1800. Maybe even, like, 1400, 1200. Like, that's a thousand years. Like, there were Taoist sages that just people have, like, been following. They're like, yeah, this guy's, like, 299. I mean, some of them were even acknowledged by world leaders, I think, in their time. It's just, like... I mean, like, I don't know, maybe it's just, like, Eckhart Tolle or something. Like, is he really enlightened? I mean, but I do think it's possible to live a lot longer. I mean, even Abraham, so let's say Abraham in the Bible, I think he was, like, 150 or 160 when he died. He's fucking old as shit. If you look at, he set out. He left his parents' house he was on her. And God said, you and your wife will conceive a child. His wife had already gone through menopause. She was also 100. He said, you're going to conceive a child. His wife laughed when God said it. She like laugh. I think like there's some sort of punishment she had for that. But like she laughed. She was like, "You <laughs> can see the child, really? I'm hundred. I haven't been able to conceive a kid my whole entire life. I'm hundred. And Abraham was like freaking old too. And then like they went out, they had their adventures, and Abraham conquered some lands and shit. Like he did some cool shit at hundred. But the point is, they were able to like have a kid. They actually had a kid. And I think that there's just. I really believe that aging is like a social construct. And I had this reoccurring idea that like Atlantis. The civilization that sunk, a th like, uh, the people lived for a thousand years in Atlantis, because that was basically the idea, is that in Atlantis, people lived for a thousand years. I think what probably happened is that those people who lived for a thousand years figured out some really fucking crazy shit about health, and they invented substances, ambrosia and nectar, that allowed people who consumed them, the royalty, to live forever, basically. And there you have Kronos, Rhea, you have the Titans. And then you have, and God's just like... This shit floods them all out and titans then they're they're basically oppressing all the um the human beings when you think of the greek mythology their records of the golden age was the titans basically completely oppressing all human beings humans weren't allowed to have fire like very kind of shit um and then god floods the world and there is a flood in greek mythology too it's not correlated with this idea but why would it be if you could if you listen to what i say next so then floods the world now atlantis falls the gods that come next, the sons of, the, the children of the previous rulers of the entire earth, Zeus, etc., they have maybe some supply of ambrosia and nectar, but they don't really know how to make it anymore. The ability to create it, or gone, or maybe, maybe they have the horn, because I think they're in Greek mythology, they have the horn, the horn that Zeus was, the, the horn of the cow that nursed Zeus gave forth ambrosia and nectar, I think. So maybe there was some technology that created, maybe the technology of the story lost, who knows. But basically, they have these substances that allow people to maintain this metabolic rate that allows them to be functionally immortal. So you have the gods, the ancient Greek gods going around doing their thing. And in ancient Greece, there's also, this is interesting, this is crazy too. There's this account of nymphs. What the fuck are nymphs? Well, nymphs are like gods. They're beautiful, strong, much stronger than human beings, but they, they don't quite live forever, but they're really, they're really long-lived. Almost gods. It's crazy, these nymphs. These nymphs living out in the woods, out in nature, in harmony with nature, living a really long time. I wonder if there's any accounts of the children of these nymphs or like, like what exactly the relation of nymphs is to humans. Oh, there is. Achilles, the greatest Greek warrior of all time, was the son of a nymph. But he's a mortal. How is, how is a mortal man the son of a nymph? How does that even make any sense? He's a mortal man. What, what's the characteristic of Achilles? He's the greatest sprinter in all of Greece. He's the most explosive human being they've ever seen. He's got the most active mitochondria on the fucking planet. He's the son of a nymph. Well, what's a nymph seem like? Someone who's optimized their mitochondria through the means that I'm trying to create or rediscover.